That green stuff just doesn't want to burn, man. There. Remember who's boss, dude? Ugh. Besides the physical fitness aspect of why I do these things and uh, getting myself used to uh, hardship, not that, I mean it's a very nice day, but I also get to see things like this. No shoeing. All right, let me uh, <clears throat> let me get this pack off. Okay, scored these uh, these Atlas uh, snowshoes. They're Atlas 1030s. They're rated from uh, I think 180 to 250. Uh, pounds of a load and with my, uh, my with my pack With my pack about 55 pounds and my flick with all my lenses and water and everything being another 20 I, I uh, I'm tipping the scale with like about a 70 70 pound load um, So Atlas 1030s they're 30 30 inches long But uh, what I think is cool is these bindings these bindings are really easy really awesome and they don't I haven't I'm, I'm not very experienced with snowshoes but uh, I haven't I haven't uh, slipped at all so for the heel strap here I don't know if you can see but this little this little detent here pokes in one of these holes and it just snaps on there you wrap it around, it's awesome, and then you just pull it tight. Bloop, like that. When you put your toe in, your uh, big toe goes in this corner here. And uh, they do have a dummy proof system. Uh, like me, I was a dummy. So I needed it. So, in each... Uh, in each shoe, I'm not sure if you can see this, right in the bottom, it'll show you, right, so this is R, R for, uh, for right foot, with your instep right here. But uh, these are great, man. I was surprised that uh, snowshoeing was so uh, difficult. You really need some legs. It's a whole nother, whole nother experience to have uh, to have, you know, two, two more pounds, and uh, 
the snow out here hasn't really uh, warranted it. <clears throat> but uh, great, great cleats and cramp uh, crampons on the back. So here, you got your full toe, and then these this fully pivots, and then uh, again you're uh, edging on the on the back here, and the 1030s do have a uh, they've got a uh, arch support when you're uh, going uphill, so that's pretty cool. Okay. my wet wood. It's dry in the middle, but make a good platform. See, it doesn't want to stay. Look at that is. <clears throat> ah, come on. That green stuff just doesn't want to burn, man. There. Remember who's boss, dude? Ugh. <clears throat> there we go, baby. Bang, baby, bang. Get drying. Dry out, bitch.
thing's putting up some heat now. That's good. Still doing the camp chores. Got the fires going, the uh, tents up, uh, floors down, and uh, I'm still I, I'm looking forward to having everything soaking wet in the morning. They say, uh, you know, they say your body heat is going to melt the snow and you're going to sink into your campsite wherever your tent's set up, where your body's laying. So we'll see. I've got the foam pad and then I've got the, uh, the X-Ped Sin Mat UL7, the ultralight one that I had, uh, gosh, that uh, bug out validation video. I, that was the first time I used this. Man, that was like two years ago already. <laughs> Crazy. Um, so I'm hoping what will happen is the foam pad plus the air mattress plus me being in the sleeping bag may prevent my body heat from affecting the ground. So we'll both be insulated from each other. We'll see in the morning. We'll see if I don't have... Uh, you know, a mummified shape of a snow angel <laughs> in the tent at the bottom of the, or on the, underneath on the snow when we, uh, when I wake up in the morning. Either way, it's not going to, uh, they said that the, uh, the temperature when I did the recon said that it's not supposed to drop down to, uh, to freezing anymore. So if you stamp the snow down, you know, the idea is that it freezes overnight. Um, it'll refreeze. Or if it's powder, then it'll compress and it'll get hard. There's no powder out here. It's been way too warm. Everything's melting. So uh, we'll see what happens in the morning. In the meantime, i got to finish blowing up this mattress. On sleeping bag, it's just the the stuff sack that I have in here is way better. back up there while we have dinner. This is the uh, this is the uh, Sierra Designs Sierra Designs Zisu uh, rated down to 12 degrees and it's got that uh got that um, water resistant down. It's a pretty awesome bag. Use it in the Sierras down to 17 degrees. Should be pretty good here since right now it's only uh, what is it 37 so it is getting lower. So it was gonna only be about uh, and dropping so 30 uh, 37.7 so that's pretty pretty exciting. Get to test the stuff, which is what it's all about. <clears throat> you guys ever wonder why uh, guys are out here in the boonies doing this? Uh, I don't know, tactical bug out, whatever, whatever it is getting back to nature <clears throat> you know why I mean I don't know I'm asking <laughs> no uh, <clears throat> I can't uh, I can't speak for you know everybody I can only speak for myself and for me uh, I guess the reason why I come out here 
was uh, because of the war. Um, my last tour in Iraq was in 2006, and uh, it was a rough year. I was one of those guys. Uh, I was a platoon leader, then platoon sergeant, <clears throat> even uh, hot swapping uh, units in the middle of the deployment. And I had lost my platoon just prior to deployment. They gave it to some new guy after I trained with them. So that was pretty tough. And then uh, I was also one of those guys you hear about who's, uh, you know, who's Who's, who was having family problems back home. You know, the wife was uh, was uh, kind of stepping out with somebody. <clears throat> so it was a it was a it was a rough year. We got hit a couple times. You've seen the video on uh, uh, March to Painted Rocks 2. There's uh, some black and white surveillance video of me actually taking an RPG hit uh, while on patrol. <clears throat> so I mean, we got hit. Picked up a lot of dead guys. I mean, it was like right at the beginning of their period of the civil war between the Shias and Sunnis. Whatever. Anyway, once I got at, once I finished that deployment, I was <clears throat> immediately sent to uh, Fort Irwin at the NTC to be a OC, an observer controller. That was in uh, 2007, and. Uh, for me, who was who was dealing, who was fresh from the war and was seeing all these things, <clears throat> the thing about being a uh, uh, now it's an OCT observer slash combat trainer is that you have to keep all those things that you experienced fresh in your mind. You know, you have to <clears throat> remember all those lessons learned, and so my daily duties. Uh, as we got uh, new units ready to deploy, uh, kept everything that I experienced fresh in my mind. <clears throat> and it was really tough. But one thing I can say about duty out at uh, the National Training Center at Fort Irwin is that <clears throat> you didn't have much time to dwell on, uh, on your problems because you were living out in nature. Uh, in an open Humvee, you know, no windows, no doors, and uh, you had a cooler and you had nature, and it, I mean, it, it, th it threw everything that it could at you, extreme cold, extreme heat, wind, sand, moon dust, I mean, it was, uh, it was crazy, so you forget, you know, it helped me, and seeing these, uh, these grand vistas, this, topography in such a massive grand scale I mean it was like it's like working at the Grand Canyon every day you know and you're in awe of it every day and uh, I guess you can say that the desert uh, ate my angst my post-war angst and so for uh, you know for vets who are coming back uh, I would say get out to uh, get get into outdoors <clears throat> whether you're for buying or or what just go get out and see some grand things that remind you that uh, your problems don't amount to a hill of beans in this world the world will still go on and so with that kind of perspective you know I learned to let go of everything and uh, I'm better for it and so because of that uh, I've been out trying to out here doing these things trying to uh, maintain my exposure to bigger grander things that uh, that remind me that I'm not all that and that I shouldn't dwell on on myself so much you know I think a lot of people especially younger soldiers who uh, who feel victimized by the nation's policies or whatever uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's very fair 
when it's an all-volunteer force, you know. I mean, did you not see Private Ryan before you signed up? Just saying. <clears throat> anyway, um, so for me, you know, being outdoors and doing these hard things keeps my mind uh, away from dwelling on, you know, woe was me, woe was me, I had such a hard time. In the war. Good morning. Been up for a couple hours. Taking care of business getting all this uh, stuff ready to get packed up here. Um, the Zisu again performed uh, flawlessly. Uh, my feet were cold, but that's because uh, my feet are always cold. <laughs> but uh, I guess uh, what I did was I, you know, you, you stuff all your clothes that you don't want to be freezing cold in the morning. You stuff them in the foot of your sleeping bag. Or next to your body and then uh, what happens is for me you know when you when you jump into a down bag your body heat kind of like instantly warms it up and uh, because my feet had no contact with the actual down inside the bag I wasn't able to uh, feel that heat so uh, that didn't work so well for me but um, I had a good sleep I went to bed about 9 and uh, didn't get up till after six, so uh, that was good action uh, on the Zisu. <clears throat> nice sleep, wasn't? Uh, it did get. I think it it uh, went below freezing when I got up to do to take care of business. Uh, the snow was uh, extra crunchy, so I guess it it may have froze over uh, a little bit again. No uh, no condensation at all in the. Uh, in the Copper Spur UL1, none, and uh, which was good. I mean, it wasn't that breezy, but I mean, I didn't guy it all out. You know, I just it's only up with four stakes, four snow stakes. That's it. So the wind wasn't was pretty negligible. So uh, I didn't feel like guying it out all the way. And so because of that, there's lots of uh, lots of ventilation. But that's what. Uh, one of the reasons why I like this uh, copper spur and I don't know if you can see it but it's not just uh, you know it's not just mesh all around right it has this uh, nylon this breathable nylon stuff which you know for uh, for lighter camping you most tents just have this mesh stuff but this nylon here um, what it does is it blocks the wind. At the same time, it'll uh, it'll keep the wind from hitting me directly. So uh, it was good action there too. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about were these uh, these boots. You guys have seen me um, in almost every video, if not all of them, wearing some kind of. Uh, Solomon boot and uh, that was a discovery through a friend of mine, but this is uh These boots aren't new and I'm not sure I don't know if they still have them on the Solomon website But I got these through um, Amazon you can get them through Amazon or maybe even Zappos, but anyway, this is a super light boot. This is called the Solomon uh, Nitro and it is a cold weather boot and it has a uh, you know faux fur on the inside and uh, yesterday I well what I did was I did the well not the what I did was you know what is recommended so I wear I wore a sock liner a thin sock liner and then um, what I did was I got some expedition weight smart wool socks and when I actually bought the boot here when I got the boot, 
it felt uh, I, it, normally Solomon's true to size, but when I got this, it felt a little bit large, and I was like, uh, okay, I was kind of wary about blisters. But with the sock liner and an expedition weight sock, uh, fit perfectly. And I did not feel the cold. I didn't feel the snow. These are uh, Gore-Tex. I don't know if you could see it there, but these are Gore-Tex boots, and um, nothing got in. And then with you know. I was wearing a uh, uh, I was wearing a gator uh, on top of these, you know, which wrapped around here, and uh, didn't let it didn't let any kind of junk get inside. Um, I was sloshing through water and stuff earlier before I put the snowshoes on. So uh, great boot and really really light for the protection that it provides. Anyway. Solomon Nitro, nice. <clears throat> First time I used it and uh, it was worth it. They also make this Tundra boot that's rated to like below zero and all this kind of stuff. I do have that and it it acts like, when you put your foot in it, it acts almost like one of these, uh, a down sleeping bag. You know, like if I lay this bag over my legs right now, I feel the heat, like there's heat builds already. It's like reflecting back on me. The down inside is is reflecting my heat from my body. And in those tundras, those Solomon tundra boots, it was the same thing. I stuck them in there, stuck my feet in there, and just warmth started to build. I don't know if they got some weird chemical uh, lining inside or what, but it's trippy. Um, I felt those would be too warm on out here because I'm hiking and stuff like that, so uh, I didn't bring them, and it wasn't supposed to be that cold, so uh, wise choice on the nitros. Anyway, let me uh, start getting packed up here, and then I'll get back with you. Gear check. Here we go. This is everything that I brought out here. So what we got is uh, we have, uh, let me get my pointer here. One closed foam cell mat, one Zisu, uh, Sierra Design Zisu 12, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, air mattress, then you got your tent system here. We've got the uh, Copper Spur UL1 with poles and uh, floor footprint, including snow stakes. Then we've got snivel gear, Army Fleece Jacket. This is actually part of the sleep system. This is a sleep sleeping bag liner and a bivy sack, unused, but just in case. Big bag of snivel gear, uh, thermal underwears, change underwears, etc. Wet weather gear, wet weather top, wet weather bottoms. Leather gloves. Knee pads. Regular gloves. This is the ones, these are the gloves that I came out here with. Uh, I use the leather gloves for uh, dealing with uh, fire or doing any any uh, harder work um, these gloves here are made of nylon you notice the pinky's not there anymore because it melted on my canteen cup when I uh, was uh, cooking with it it was hot and so the little handles on the canteen cup uh, just seared right through there <clears throat> turn the nylon into plastic yada yada okay knee pads trowel from Walmart three bucks Cold Steel Recon Scout, Axe, extra pair of socks, shit paper, first aid kit, headlamp, thermometer slash altimeter, bunch of batteries and media for all this filmmaking stuff, and then there's the uh, the Flick, the fighting load carrier with uh, telephoto lenses. I got binoculars in here and a can of bear spray in this last pocket here. I'm in the Angeles National Forest, uh, so I don't know about open carry firearms, but I didn't bring mine this time. Two canteens, half a gallon of water on my person at all times, extra spare batteries, and then uh, the Garcia uh, bear canister, where they call it the uh, backpacker's cache, and uh, pretty heavy. Uh, with food, it was just a couple days worth of food, but uh, 
it was upward of 10 pounds maybe even 12 pounds just because of the canister itself and a couple days rations uh, I kept my uh, TP in there it's unscented but um, I just don't take any chances uh, one tip if it's gonna be freezing out carry your uh, your TP with you in your thigh pocket or something to keep it from freezing so we got the backpack and then uh, more film gear got a Veravon slider Targus monopod and then of course we've got the main system right here with the tripod Velbon head etc and then of course we've got the uh, snowshoes so all of that in the Jade 70 so now I gotta pack all this stuff up okay so the first things I'm gonna want to do on the start uh, just like my other packing videos I put my uh, sleep system on the bottom because it's light since I got the three liter uh, water bladder in here there's still some water but it leaves kind of a shelf so I can stick this under it and this will rest right uh, right on my back and then the uh, sleeping bag will make sure that it stays there I roll that all the way to the bottom there and now that leaves me two little cubby holes uh, on both sides so I put these smaller items <clears throat> sleeping bag liner and the bivy and that covers these two corners like right here all right then uh, start in the middle again I, I keep on using these like size items right so here's the tent and here's the the uh, jacket comparably sized all right, stood up right next to each other. Now, this is actually less of a pain now that uh, I've had a day's worth at the, of water drinking on the uh, on the water bladder there. And I'll pack the snivel gear in there. Uh, tent poles. On the other side, it's like right in this corner right here. Leather gloves. Rain pants. Rain jacket. Oh, let me put the knee pads on the bottom first. So we got these knee pads all the way on the bottom. Rain jacket. I got a trowel that goes right in between. It's got this cleavage right here, fits perfectly. Right in there. And there's, I mean, look, there's still plenty of space for stuff. There's like so much room. Alright, alright. That's pretty much it. Now for the, uh, for the food. Not that there's much left, it's basically a bag of trash in there, and I think I have one meal. There's still some room in here for some of these knickknacks that I carried that you need an emergency socks, first aid kit, 
These are all the things that you need quickly. Headlamp. Spare batteries in media. Spare glove liners. And of course, the TP Axe. Right through the gear loop there. And then flip it up. Sits right through there. Tightened. And then extra security. This goes right around it, clips one slider and then the uh, the tripod will go in there do then attach this I left the trekking pole outside just in case uh, I needed to get it. Right, I don't have to unclip these clips to unsecure it. All right, and so then the monopod slips right in there for the ride. The only thing I don't like this bag about this bag is that these aren't unclippable. So. That would have made things a little bit more high speed, but whatever. Cinch these compression straps down good and tight, and you are good to go. I don't think I'm gonna be snowshoeing out here on the way back, so I'm gonna go ahead and attach the shoes to the outside here. All right, squish them together. I put this, the rear set of bindings right up in this little pocket here. And then just uh, grab my straps. Click it right here and now the bindings will keep it from sliding any lower. Ugh. And then what I do is I pinch the pinch the webbing here in order to adjust, otherwise the whole thing will go sliding around. <clears throat> and then the bottom ones, what I'll do is I'll lace them through inside the frame. Hopefully you can see that. Lay in the way here. So I brought them inside the frame here just to wrap around the, uh, the webbing. I don't want to cinch this too tight because I don't want to tear this. But that way it's secure. And done. So I'm here on, uh, on uh, this is uh, Blue Ridge Road, and it parallels, uh, well, the Pacific Crest Trail parallels this. Uh, I think it's down below us, maybe above us, I'm not sure. But uh, 
that would have definitely made things a little bit harder taking the PCT uh, because it'd be definitely um, undoctored trail just so trying to find it and stay on it would have been difficult so anyway the uh, going through all this slush slush and mud the uh, the boots are just hanging tight man hanging tight totally not uh, my feet aren't wet haven't been wet since I began and I'm just slogging through all this mud and water and snow melt and uh, having a great time so should be getting back shortly and then back down to the city okay I'm about uh, 15 minutes out from the camp on my way back and uh, all this was all this road had snow on it yesterday uh, but it was I mean you know it wasn't that deep it was like uh, two three inches tops and now it's gone um, that's how fast it's going really crappy snow out here but uh, check this out I don't know if you can see it I'll try and zoom in but uh, I think the very snowy peak way way in the distance I think that's uh, Mount San Gorgonio that's the highest peak in Southern California so we're looking uh, south now probably southeast across uh, if that's San Gorgonio way at the top I'm talking about beyond the the mountains right here but there's a little white cap you can see behind it that's probably San Gorgonio and then you're looking at the Big Bear Lake Arrowhead area and we're in the uh, the Angeles the Angels forest the National Forest of Angels <laughs> so I prefer to do a little bit more remote camping but uh, I don't have a truck so I can't get out there so places like uh, like Mammoth and places like that um, I just can't get to so this is my only opportunity I think this is probably gonna be the last snow of the season down here so I just had to get up here before it was too late this is that part of that big uh, winter chain winter system that came through uh, over three days in uh, late February early March and uh, it came over the weekend I started on Wednesday I think and this is all that was left already so pretty quickly it had melted away temperatures are back up in the 60s and 70s so it kind of sucks but still pretty So look guys and gals, I appreciate uh, all your subscriptions, there's been a lot lately, <laughs> a lot, so I appreciate that. Um, if you like what you're seeing, share the videos. You know we got the, uh, the Facebook page where you can join the conversation. We got Twitter. Links are in the uh, crotch bar. So until next time, get out there and we'll see you.